I was recently invited by my friend Rob to go on a road trip with him to uh, visit Mike, who runs the Raven Wolf Retro Tech YouTube channel. Uh, he happens to be just a couple hours away, and what a great trip that was. So I want to thank Mike for his hospitality, thank Rob for the invite, but most of all, in addition to that, I want to thank Mike for hooking me up with two of the most sought-after Commodore 64 peripherals. What you see here is a Commodore a CMD RAM link and a CMD HD 20, 20 megabyte hard drive. So let's get down to it. The, uh, the RAM link is used often in unison with the HD 20 to speed it up, to help speed things up. I'm not going to go over the RAM link. You don't need it in order for the hard drive to work. But um, we'll go over this in a future video. One of the things that's usually missing from this thing is the cable. And it uses an ST, an Atari ST external drive cable uh, for connecting an external drive. So it's a, what I think it's a 14 pin cable. So I'm waiting on, on that actually in order to play with that a little bit more. So we're going to put that aside. But let's concentrate on the hard drive here. I know for a fact that it has a little bit of a problem because I did plug it in and I already saw that it was that it had an issue. So let's take a look at the issue together, see how we're going to troubleshoot it, see what enhancements we can make, and we'll go from there. Okay, so first things first, the power supply is very similar to an Amiga power supply. It has 5 volts um, and 12 volts and ground, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. All right, so you'll be able to see what the issue is as soon as I turn it on. Don't have to have it plugged into the computer to see that it has a problem. So keep your ears open. The drive has a nice little warbly sound to it. So you can see the activity light is starting to do its thing. The disk drive is just not spinning. It's warbling. It has a little warbling sound. So it is kind of spinning, but it just sounds like it's on its last. Well, it's already met its fate. <laughs> so if we wait a few seconds. The air light, boom, there we go. The air light will come on. So that's the issue. 99% sure it's the, it's the SCSI drive that's in it, and, and these use a SCSI drive. So let's take this apart, and I have some thoughts. My first thought is we're going to replace the drive, the hard drive, obviously, but do I replace it with another SCSI 20 megabyte hard drive, or do I replace it with a, a SCSI to SD2 um, adapter board? So. I will leave that a little bit further in the video so you can see what I'm going to do because I already actually made up my mind, but that was the question that went through my mind when I figured that this had a problem. So let's take this apart and, um, and go from there. So in order to take this thing, it's really easy to take apart, sort of. <laughs> There's four screws on the bottom, okay, and the case would then just slide off, ah, except for there's one more screw that's hidden behind the little template here. So you're gonna have to kind of peel off a little bit of the corner, like you see it's been done there, um, or cut the hole, which, you know, I'd rather just peel the corner and then stick it back. But so that's the fifth screw. And that is really easy to miss, especially if you don't see the little indentation there. Um, and yeah. So, let's go ahead and go at this. Okay, this unit is quite simple. I've already taken that screw out and decided that's when I was going to make this video. So. That's why this is easy to slide out, but you'll see what I'm, what I'm talking about in a second here. 
So you can see that that screw right there comes through. It's like a little bit of extra reinforcement. And there's the back of the case where that screw goes into. So, all right, putting that aside for now, let's see what we have here. Very simple. Okay. So we have an, a, a SCSI connector so you can chain, I think up to seven SCSI devices, if I'm not mistaken, serial ports, auxiliary the parallel port this will go to the ram link this uses zst cable the power and obviously the on and off switch on the front we have the lights um, i'm not going to really get into how to configure or how to use this um, but suffice to say swap eight swap nine this is defaulted to a device number 12 so you hit swap eight or swap nine to change the device number and then the right protect and then this is just like a a floppy reset okay works the same way so what do we have here in terms of the drive itself we have an st 125 n so it's about a 20 megabyte little over 20 megabyte drive held on by some spacers on this side and um, it goes flat up against the plate over here so Let's go ahead and take this out because one of the things that I do want to point out is we want to see what ROM version is used on this. And early, the earlier ROM versions um, only allow you to partition up to around 200 megs or so, but the later, the latest ROM version, which is 2.8, allows you a lot more um, space for your partition. You can put up to four gigs, if I'm not mistaken. So let's take a look at that. We got to take out the hard drive anyways. So. Okay, so you want to be careful. Once you get the hard drive unscrewed and loose and everything, you just kind of want to flip it. And then that way you can take the connector out. And then the connector the stripes on the connector always goes to the power so that's how you know how to line it up when you put this thing back together again that way you don't forget um, and SCSI connectors typically have a little indentation or not indentation a little extrusion on the top so you really can't put it in backwards anyways but just in case so there's our hard drive what I plan to do with this is test it a little further on one of my PCs um, that has a SCSI card on it. So we'll just put that aside. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this. There's two things that I'm going to look at right off the bat. The first is the version of the, um, the boot ROM. And the version of the boot ROM here is version 4.2. Um, that is an older version. I'm going to be replacing the ROM with Jiffy DOS's, Jim Brain's Jiffy DOS version 2.8. That is the last version that was released. And the reason for that is this older ROM here only allows you, I think, around 200 megs per partition. And uh, it limits the size of the drive. Jim Brain's latest Jiffy DOS boot ROM for this allows you to have up to a 4 gigabyte hard drive on it. Um, and the partitions are a lot. It allows you larger partitions as well. So we're going to replace that ROM. You can, I will leave a link in the description to Jim Brain's product page where you can get an image and burn your ROM. I don't know if he sells the actual ROM, but you can burn your own EEPROM with that image. So I'll leave that in the link, that link in the description. The other thing of note here is the battery it has an internal battery, it has an internal time clock. So I want to make sure that there's no leaks on it. What I'll probably do at some point in time, maybe not in this video, but I will replace this battery. I'll just clip the leads and put a quick disconnect and put a little Velcro on the side here so I can put a battery that I can easily replace anytime I want without having to unsolder things. Um, it's kind of like what I did, what I do with the, um, with the Amiga 2000s um, on the motherboard. Very similar. Take the battery out and put a quick disconnect and a new battery in. So anyways, it's a simplistic, clean 
little board. So that's really basically all there is to it. So what am I going to do now as far as do I replace the drive, get another drive? No, because I, you know, if I got another drive, it'd be used most likely and be old um, and, you know, risk of failure is high. So to replace the SCSI drive, some folks uh, use a CF Aztec Monster adapter board. Um, others use a SCSI to SD adapter, um, which allows you to use SD cards um, in place of the hard drive. I'm going to use something very similar to the SCSI to SD adapter. It's called the Zulu. And the reason I chose to do that is one, I already have an image. I don't have to go through all the configuration that you, you, you have to configure these boards in order for them to work correctly. So I don't have to do that pretty much. It's a simple configuration for the Zulu since I already have an image. The other reason is the Zulu is a lot less expensive. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, I don't know how long it'll last since it'll be an eBay link, but for $50, you can pick up the Zulu and it's a do-it-yourself board. You just have to solder a few components onto it and you're done. So that's what we're going to do next. So stay tuned. Okay, so I burned a new uh, boot ROM, um, version 2.8. So replace the old one with the new one. And what did I get in the mail today? I got our uh, Zulu card from Rapid Hole Computing. So just a little bit of assembly required. This was $50. Um, so I don't think it's a bad deal for getting a SCSI card that works on an SD. Um, so there we go. Just some minor assembly required. A few connectors and a couple of capacitors and uh, we'll be on our way. So let me get the soldering and then we can uh, test this. I'll put a 32 gig um, SD card in here and see where we go from there. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so I got the Zulu SCSI together. Basically, I had to solder the connector, the power plug, two capacitors and three jumpers. So the I added an extra set of jumpers here. So you don't need the buzzer enable jumper, but I added it anyway. I added the jumper there anyway. So there's a buzzer enable jumper, there's the LED, there's the initiator, and the most important one is this one in the middle, which is the terminator. Um, since I only have one SCSI drive, so to speak, I need to terminate it. And so that is essential that you have that jumper. So that's what the end result of the Zulu SCSI compact looks like. So in addition to that, I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card that we're going to use for it. I also made a converter, if you will, an adapter, I should say, power plug adapter. So I can plug this um, power plug in without having to modify it. So did that. Just so you know, this plugs in this way and the red, which is the far left, is five volts positive, the two in the middle are ground, and the one on the right is 12 volts positive. And that basically adheres to the plug here. And then the other thing that I did is, and I also made a custom 3D print of a mount for it. Uh, I made it so I can still use all the original screws, including the side um, spacers. Um, so that way I don't I can use the original parts and not lose them. <laughs> so we'll get all this together and uh, yeah, let's take it from there. So stay tuned. Okay, so the uh, SD cards in these, or the micro SD in this case, um, we have to create images. Um, the images are basically telling the system that this is the configuration for the hard drive that it's supposed to look at. Now, in Commodore land, four gigabytes for an 8-bit is, is the max pretty much for an 8-bit computer. So you could create four gigabyte images that is representative of one drive. If you create multiple images, then you can have multiple drives. But it starts getting crazy when you start looking at creating drives and then creating partitions inside the drives and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to create one image. Um, and that's what we're going to work off of. 
Okay, so the first thing we want to do is format the card. So we come here, format. I format it as XFAT, not FAT32, because XFAT will make it just a little bit faster. Um, and I usually, you can use the default allocation, I usually use 4096 bytes. Then we're going to call this HDHC. You may want to stick with this. I, I don't recall if Zulu SCSI firmware requires um, this name as a volume or not, but I've always used it and I've never had any issues with it. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll do a quick format. It'll erase everything on here and the format's complete. Boom. Okay. So the next thing you need to do is you need to create the image. Okay. Now I use a program to create the image. I use a program called Disk Jockey. Um, it's a free program, highly recommend it. Um, I like it better than FSUtil where I don't have to go and try to, you know, figure out the actual bytes. Um, so if we look at Disk Jockey, um, I specify that I'm going to create an image. The image is going to be um, 4096 megabytes. Okay, that's four gigs. And I'm going to use it as a blue SCSI and I'm going to create the base image. So you always want to have a zero, an HD zero. Um, that's your primary. So if you have a bunch of images, it's good practice to always start off with HD zero. Um, remember, Zulu SCSI, if I named the CD zero, it would look at that as a CD image, um, but we're doing a hard drive image. Um, and I'm going to save it to this directory, and then what I'm going to do is just copy it over to the SD card. Okay, and there's the image, four gigs. So I'm going to copy this image to my SD card and I can create as many of these as the SD card can hold, but just remember each image is looked at as a hard drive. So, you know, you're gonna be swapping the hard drives around or would you rather just create a four gig image, which is an immense amount of data for a Commodore um, and just create your partitions inside that one image. Um, so up to you. Um, you can read a little bit more about um, creating images from the Zulu SCSI um, operating instruction manual, whatever you want to call it. Um, then you can also read about partitions and everything in the CMD H, you know, hard drive manual. So that's my image. So let's copy this over to the card um, and then let's go and plug this all in and keep our fingers crossed that the image will be recognized and that everything works as it's supposed to. All right, so stay tuned. Uh, one more thing I wanted to point out. Um, <clears throat> when If you have issues, um, the drive's not recognized um, once you plug in the SD card and you, know, and you turn everything on and you don't see it, whatever. You can take the micro SD card out and um, take a look at the contents. The Zulu log.txt file shows you everything you need to know as to what happened um, in terms of the image and the initialization and all that stuff. So you can see it detected the card and uh, um, it detected um, the image file. It um, basically um, set it to four gigs and completed the initialization. So if you had an issue here, it would tell you image not found or it would tell you, you know, whatever the error is, um, it always gives you a good clue. So if you don't see the drive materialize when you plug in your SD card and you turn this thing on um, and it's not recognized, look at the, take the uh, micro SD card out and take a look at it and look for the Zulu log file in it. It um, provides you a lot of information. All right, all right, let's move on. Okay, so I have the Zulu um, so the install. I've got the um, hard drive on my bench here. It's plugged in to the Commodore. One thing you have to keep in mind is the initiator jumper right here. You don't want to have it jumped, otherwise this won't work um, because it's the initial drive. It's not the, it's not initiating the control for other drives. Okay, so let's take a look and um, well, let's let's boot this up first of all. And turn this guy on. So the SCSI card is going here. That's good. There are the indicator lights. And I don't see any errors. 
And if there was an error with the SCSI card or the drive itself, this LED on the Zulu would be flashing like crazy. Okay, so let's take a look at the screen and see if we can identify the partitions and format one or two of them. All right, stay tuned. Let's turn this computer on here. Let's go to our CMD tool. Okay, so we are going to Okay, so first thing we want to do is put this in um, configuration mode. So I'm going to hold I'm going to hold down the swap eight and swap nine buttons, and once I do that, I'm going to hit the reset button. The activity lights went off. So now we're ready to see if this recognizes our drives. So I have one image on there so it'll fly through dev one through seven um, there we go so that's our one image four gigabytes so we're going to go ahead and select that one and yes we want to wipe out all our data absolutely sure so that was really quick Okay, so now we have to, well, let's just wait until it's finished verifying. So this might take a while for four gigs. So let's let it do its thing and we'll come back in a few minutes, see where we're at. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, format was successful. This only took an extra minute or so. So that's awesome. Um, so now we have to create the system, right? So Okay, so I'm going to hold down swap 8 and swap 9 and hit reset. And then hit enter. Okay. So this creates the system, the OS system from scratch. So if you're adding more devices, you don't need to do this on every device, but um, you need to do this on the, on the main device, and that's what we're doing right now. CMD already shipped their um, hard drives with this already installed, and then they have repair programs if, in the event that um, something went wrong so you don't wipe out everything and you just replace the OS. But in our case, we're starting from scratch. So we're going to be uh, doing the create. Well, after the format, we're doing the create just to create the system. And then we'll use HD tools to handle the partition. OK, hitting the reset. OK, so now we want to set up some partitions. I'm just going to set up the main partition. but um, you use HD tools to uh, set up the partitions. We have to at least set up one main partition. So that's what I'm going to do right now. You can have up to 254 partitions, but you know, after a certain number, it starts to be becoming a little bit more, you know, not complex, just you know, overwhelming. So, um, all right.
So 256 blocks is really nothing. So um, the bottom line is there are around um, 4,000 blocks per megabyte. So it's about four blocks per 1K. So at 4,000 blocks per megabyte, um, we have four gigs. <laughs> so for the main partition, I'm going to devote 15 megabytes. So 15 megabytes times 4,000 blocks per megabyte, that gives us 60,000 blocks. You can't type in the numbers, I guess. <laughs> And then if you go back to the type, there's different types. Um, we're using native to, to take advantage of all the commands, all the extra stuff that goes with that. But um, there's the different types are like 1541 drive, 1581 drive, CPM. So there's a bunch of other different types that limit you, um, your commands to those, um, to those types of devices. Um, but we're in the main partition here, I'm going to just keep as native. So that way we get take advantage of um, all the native commands. And we're going to call this main. OK. Yes. OK, so. And looking at the partition table, we can see main is in there, 60,000 blocks. So we are good to go. All right. OK, so let's reset the drive, get our computer going again. Actually, let's just go ahead and just drop to a normal screen here. The hard drive is on, and we won't bother hitting the swap a button. We'll just go ahead and load up the directory from the default 12. And there you go. 60,000 blocks free. That's our main partition. Okay, I'm hitting the swap eight button on the front of the unit. You should see the same thing now as device eight. Do a quick list. There you go. 60,000 blocks free. All right, so now let's go do a quick summary and wrap this thing up. All right, stay tuned. Well, I think we accomplished a lot with this project. We uh, burned a new, uh, more current boot ROM, allowing us uh, more storage space, or at least to take advantage of larger partitions or larger um, images. Uh, we replaced the hard drive with a SCSI emulating board, which was um, a real nice little project, inexpensive. Uh, 45 for the board, around $5 for shipping. That's 50 bucks. Um, made a 3D mounting bracket for it. Um, showed you how to partition, how to create the images, how to partition, how to re-implement or reinstall the operating system. Um, so a lot accomplished out of this. So if you have a failed uh, CMD hard drive, I hope this video helps you out and lets you bring it back to life again. So future videos maybe a little bit more of the workings of the hard drive itself because it's a fascinating device, especially in the Commodore world. Um, that much disk space for Commodore land is incredible. And then on top of that, you put the RAM link in to the equation um, to speed things up a lot. Um, that's also incredible. So, you know, uh, maybe future videos there for sure. Um, or you can always, you know, twist Mike's arm over at Raven Wolf's um, YouTube uh, channel. <laughs> you know, he has a few of these units. Maybe he can show you more of the inner workings of it. Um, but in the end, I appreciate Mike giving me the opportunity to bring these uh, items into my collection. Appreciate Rob for uh, planning the road trip out there. And uh, hey, like I always say, you only live life once and it's short. Enjoy every day like it's your last. I think that wraps this puppy up. Peace out.